right so the motor brand we used even in the physical lecture was not 40s cap and due to some tactics they were using to compact the data sheet it was quite problematic so I instead uh, I've chosen a data sheet from the brand port is kept and will be using that data sheet to find out how to find how to uh, look for the parameters required by the motor parameterization block pop dialog box in MathWorks. So remember that we had three approaches and first I'll guide you to the second approach since it, I think it would be quite familiar to us since we, uh, due to the work that we had done in lectures 3 to 5. So we'll be specifying the characteristic of the PMB DC motor using stall torque and all out speed. And upon double clicking the block, how we select this approach is under model parameterization they will have three options and uh, select this particular option of by stall torque and allowed speed and upon selecting that the characteristic parameters which need to be specified will change accordingly and what you have to do is quite simple you need to look for these parameters within the data sheet and trying to uh, find them out and you may have sometimes to do some unit conversions and put them over here. Some parameters, around 90% of the parameters will be straightforward and sometimes you will have to do a small calculation in order to find them. So I have opened up the data sheet. And once again, this data sheet is for a series of motors and uh, there are six, sorry, four columns over here specifying the characteristics of multiple motors within this series. So the motor, sorry, the motor we are looking for is 426P out of this series. So we'll take a look at the 426P column, which is the first. So in approach two, we will be needing the armature inductance, stall torque, no load speed, and weighted DC voltage supply. So stall torque and no load speed is quite straightforward. The units are over here which are also available and the same units are available in the dialog box as well. So no load speed would be 6765 RPMs. Stall torque would be eight hundred and twenty eight milli Newton meters. That would be that we are looking for. And we'll be needing the rated DC supply voltage and the armature inductance. So I had to look around for the rated DC supply voltage. I don't see the exact word, but I kind of see the nominal voltage. And if you look up the word nominal on Google or some dictionary or chat GPT. I think you will find that it is a term that which you could, which you could use instead of rated DC supply voltage. So we can use 18 volts for that parameter. So which leaves us armature inductance and you see that you don't have any characteristic parameter named armature inductance but it is 
something called rotor inductance exist within this data sheet which is the 15th row and with respect to permanent magnet brush DC motors the field is generated using permanent magnet and only the armature has a coil so there is something called uh, inductance if something uh, if some inductors is specified within the data sheet it really means uh, you know since it's a permanent magnet motor it really means the inductance of the windings and don only the armature is a winding the field is a permanent magnet so therefore this inductance is the inductance of the armature so we have armature inductance found as well so it's 0 0.1 milli henry By this stage, you have found out four characteristics that would be sufficient for you to in order to obtain a quite accurate, by quite I mean at least up to 95% accurate model. But if you really want to make it extreme, uh, obtain more accuracy out of the model, you can specify the rotor damping parameterizations as well. Under this, you will be you can specify the rotor inertia and the rotor damping constants. If it's available within the data sheet, then that's fine. But I won't be looking for these values in this exercise, even though they are specified, uh, because relative to the inertia that you, these motors would be uh, actuating, the rotor inertia and the rotor damping is uh, the effect of those two are quite insignificant. Their significance really plays in when you are dealing with micro motors and extremely small actuations then uh, rotor inertia and rotor damping would be quite significant and in such case you need to find them out from the data sheet and put them into the uh, and uh, specify them in a dialog box you will be able to specify them if you click on the mechanical tab and you'll see those uh, see uh, places for you place holders for you to specify these values so that's it for characterizing parameterizing a pmbdc motor using stall torque and no load speed once you have specified these values then matlab will use a set of equations to figure out uh, its internal uh, variables and provide you the effects of uh, the motor once it's powered and so on So uh, we'll try out another approach, which is parameterizing the PMBDC motor using equivalent circuit parameters. So for you to in order to do that, uh, you just select the appropriate parameterization method under model parameterization. And when you do that, you will see that the required list of parameters uh, would change. And you will see a new set of parameters required. And a point of clarification over here, there are three approaches that you can do in order to parameterize the motor, but uh, you don't need to follow all three approaches and specify uh, this whole list of parameters. By selecting one method and specifying the required parameters under that particular method is enough for the MathWax model to figure out all the remaining variables. So if you want to know what these equations are, you can go over to the MathWorks help page for parameterization of PMBDC motors and you will see the equations and you will see uh, a small description on how MATLAB figures out the rest of the parameters once a certain subset of parameters are specified. So that's that and let's get back to our activity in parameterizing the motor using equivalent circuit parameters we have, ch have changed the model parameterization method and we will once again we need to find armature inductance which we have already found 